Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and I really love external solid state drives because I can edit my video on the go even at 4K. And this came in the other day and I was eager to try it out. This is the SanDisk Extreme 900. Uh, this is a solid state drive, but it can take advantage of the USB 3.1 Gen 2 standard, meaning that uh, we can get some really fast speeds out of this plugged into the right computer with the right port. We're going to be taking a look at this and what makes it so fast here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this drive is on loan from CalDigit. Uh, they make docking stations and other drive subsystems, and they sent me a product that they have coming out soon that will take advantage of the speeds that this drive can offer. So they uh, packed in the drive with it. But when we're done with the drive, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed this content before I uploaded it. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. What surprised me about the drive is just how much bigger it is compared to other solid state drives we've looked at recently. Uh, so this one is a WD drive, which is now part of SanDisk, or maybe the other way around. And you can see just how much smaller uh, this little drive is, even though it has a terabyte built in. And the reason why the drive is so large is that they uh, actually stack two solid state drives inside of this and then raid them together with RAID 0 to get the speeds. You're getting the aggregate uh, space and speed of two SSDs as opposed to only one that you'll get in uh, less expensive and potentially slower solid state drives. And that has uh, its own set of issues that could arise from it. So if one of the two drives inside of this thing fails, your entire uh, data goes with it. But at the same time, you could have a one terabyte drive, a single drive, and have that fail and lose it all as well. Uh, so you definitely want to back this one up just like you would any other drive because even though you've got two drives in here, uh, they are not mirroring to each other. There is no way to set it up to work like that. It is basically wired for speed and you do have uh, two internal points of failure on here. But uh, again, I think from a reliability standpoint, it shouldn't be any different than uh, any other external hard drive. Uh, this one is the 480 gigabyte version. Uh, this sells for $270 right now, so it will cost more on a gigabyte to gigabyte basis versus a drive that might be a little slower. Uh, there's also a, a 960 gigabyte version, basically a terabyte for about $425, and they have a drive that's just shy of two terabytes that costs a whopping $701. Uh, but really, the key to all of this one is its speed. And you want to make sure that your computer can actually take this amount of speed on its USB port. So uh, you'll definitely want to check and see if your computer uh, supports USB 3.1 Gen 2. Uh, that delivers a maximum of 10 gigabits per second over that USB port. Otherwise, you're going to be running at the slower 5 gigabit per second USB 3.0 speeds. Uh, one thing also to look for is the cables you might want to use with it. So, of course, the cables that come with will take advantage of the speed, but if you need something longer, uh, you'll want to look for a cable that's got that USB logo with the little 10 next to it. Uh, because not all USB cables are created equal and not all USB Type-C ports are either. In fact, there are some USB-C ports on some computers I reviewed uh, that run at the slower USB 2.0 speed. So you definitely want to do your homework uh, before buying this to make sure that you have a computer that can support the speed it delivers. So now that we got all that out of the way, let's take a look and see exactly how fast this drive is. So I've got the drive connected up to my MacBook Pro right now. We're running the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. And look at these speeds we're getting on this thing. Uh, we're in the seven gigabits per second territory here with this, uh, writing out at about 840 megabytes per second and reading at about 870 megabytes per second. This is definitely the fastest external drive I have tested. Uh, but this is one test. This is the kind of the perfect world scenario where uh, you're really able to take advantage of this uh, RAID 0 configuration just by dumping a whole bunch of data out to it and then reading it back all sequentially. Uh, when you start doing some other stuff like random reads and writes, the performance on this drive uh, doesn't do much better than a much less expensive drive like the one I've got here. Uh, so we did run the crystal disk mark test in Windows, and there we saw random reads at 23 megabytes per second, and random writes were very slow at just under 11 megabytes per second. Compare that to the Samsung T5 
which is a, a single drive SSD that does uh, not do as well with its sequential read and write scores, but uh, does do very well on the random reads, pretty much the same speed as the Extreme 900 here, and it does much, much better on the random writes, uh, performing three and a half times faster. And I think the reason is, is that the RAID controller in here is just not very robust, and therefore when you're doing a lot of random operations with it, it's going to have a hard time keeping up with drives that uh, operate a little more efficiently with only a single uh, drive installed in them. So I think where the benefit for this drive is, is just moving large volumes of data sequentially back and forth to it, as opposed to maybe using it as a place to store and run your games or uh, use it to boot up an operating system. I think you'll get better performance out of the Samsung T5, for example, for those operations. But if you are doing a lot of high-end video capture uh, for gameplay or other uh, purposes, I think this drive might do a better job. In fact, you could probably get a number of cameras brought into it simultaneously at uh, 1080p or even some compressed 4K uh, off of a single drive here, which I think really is the benefit of uh, that RAID Zero technology here. So it's not going to be a speed demon all the time, which is why I'm not going to recommend it for booting up an operating system or using it as an external game drive. I think you'll actually get better performance out of a non-RAID traditional external solid state like that Samsung because it does have faster random read and write performance performance. But if you are a video professional, for example, I think you'll see a tremendous benefit from this because you can read data out as quickly as you just saw uh, for doing things like uncompressed video editing or writing large volumes of high resolution video to the drive when you're out in the field. And I think that's where the real benefit of this lies. It really is kind of a RAID array uh, that you can throw in your pocket here. And it is quite rugged too. So I think it'll do very well out in the field. It's got a nice metal case here. Uh, it's rubber around the side so it should be able to withstand some decent falls. Uh, you will though see there's a lot of uh, little vents in here on the top and the bottom uh, to keep it cool because again, you are running two drives inside of it. So I would recommend not getting it wet, uh, but I do think you'll be able to drop it a few times and not have to worry about the whole day's shoot going with it. But definitely back it up. You got two drives running in tandem in this thing and I think having a backup is really important. One thing I would love to try with another one would be running RAID 0 uh, through my Mac with two of these connected. So I think if you paired two of these things up, run those two as RAID 0 together, you could probably push a lot of bandwidth back and forth to this device. So overall, very good for uh, video creative professionals, but I think if you are looking for something to use as an external drive for gameplay and OS booting and that kind of stuff, I think you'll do better with one of these less expensive, smaller devices. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Gerard Newberg, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.